of an extremely well-regarded chain of restaurants here in California called El Cholo. Uh, they're, they're, that restaurant uh, group has been around for almost 100 years. Please welcome back to the program Ron Salisbury. Ron, I, I, read, your, uh, I read your letter uh, to the local uh, magazine editors my, this, about uh, this being the most challenging period uh, of your career, and you wrote that way back in, I think it was in March. Uh, tell me what I'm, I'm, I'm more beat up now. Than I was going to say. T- tell me what's happened since then. Well, as it continues on, obviously, as you're well aware, that people are getting more and more pounded and pounded with very little to rebound with, and it's attrition setting in. As you, you've heard, uh, we don't know what number of restaurants will not come out of this, but the number's climbing. It's going to be a very high number before it's done, and, and obviously, it's, this period we're going through right now is probably possibly the most difficult part of this whole thing right now because funds have run out, people are getting weary, um, people are changing habits. Um, yeah, so, but out there there is sunshine somewhere, like on a ship you're traveling through a storm and somewhere there's, there's sunlight. Ron, what adjustments have you made? Uh, well, we, when we were able to do the outside dining, we... We went outside, you know, the, the original restaurant on Western Avenue, we had a big parking lot on the outside. And I thought, well, what are we going to do? We put table and chairs out there, and it boom, people loved it. People came in that never came in a restaurant before. That's gone now. The takeout is, I think, for most people, it's, it's just, a, just a Band-Aid. So it's, it's not enough to hang on. Other than that, um, We've learned some things that when time when, when times get better, I think we will be operating a little differently and probably more uh, more knowledgeable. Ron, uh, I've known you a long time. Um, uh, tell me why you, meaning you, restaurant owners, were so have been so compliant. If someone had sat me down and said in January. Uh, this is going to be a very serious virus, and the response to the virus is that there's going to be mandates from our governor to shut down businesses, to shut down restaurants, to prevent restaurants even from serving people outdoors. I would have said, you're smoking something. I'm amazed that so many restaurateurs uh, have complied. Well, they, they, the first time through, I mean, everybody thought, you know, this is really bad. And but this last time, and uh, it just happened, when we were just, just shut down. So... Los Angeles County is so, so tough. I would not dare reopen there. In Orange County, we have five restaurants. Uh, besides El Cho, we have the Cannery and Louie's by the Bay, it's two mm-hmm. fine dining restaurants. And we decided to, along with a lot of other restaurants, we're in defiance, so we're going to open up. Well, that decision was made a week ago, and right now I'm down to two, so three of them have been beat down for various reasons. Um, a lot of it, the staff is nervous. The staff doesn't want to work. Um, People in, in, the, in the neighborhoods feel that you're not being, uh, you know, enough of them feel that you're not being responsible, that, well, it'll stay with you. So maybe it's short-lived that we try and stay awake now and stay, you know, in business now and uh, make money and serve people that, are, that want to come. So in the long run, people may hold against you. So just all kinds of things out there. And I think, uh, I know, I'm sure you remember, notice that the, a judge last, or, I mean, it was yesterday, uh, it was a suit brought to prove why outside dining, um, there was no problem with it. And the county came and a week ago, um, they, the judge said, you have no proof. Come back again. And they came back yesterday and still had absolutely no proof that it was not safe. Well, well Ron, Ron the, the CDC yeah. says there's no evidence whatsoever that there's a connection between outdoor dining uh, and a well, spike in, in the coronavirus. Yeah. Ron, Ron, you are you are. 87 years young. You do not need to do this. Don't they realize that they're forcing somebody like you to maybe make a decision that you otherwise might not make? Well, I'll tell you. I was looking up in Utah the other day for the next restaurant. I, you see, I, people say they're crazy at 87, but I have a 97-year-old landlord who's doing great <laughs> stuff every time. So every time I think I'm too old, I look at Jack and I think, I guess I'm not too old. Um. What's going to happen going forward, uh, assuming there's a vaccine, uh, and I'm assuming there is going to be a successful vaccine, uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it's probably weeks away, maybe months away before the majority of Americans get the vaccine, then what? Well, uh, you know, I'm being an optimist. I, I truly believe once they get that, you know, things come to pass and things get somewhat back to normal. I 
I would think there'd be a huge, huge pent up demand to get out because we're social animals. And uh, you know, if Maslow could add one more layer of uh, of, of, of human needs, it might be dining out in restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think it's just a part of our our DNA. Well, Ron, uh, I, I, when I that, have when that day comes, I think people are just going to just because when I see people in the restaurants, the ones that have been coming out, they're so happy to be out. It's such a such a pleasure than sitting home. It has to be. You know, there's a petition that was circulated in the U.K., Ron, where tens of thousands of scientists, healthcare professionals, and others have signed saying these lockdowns do not make any sense. There are all sorts of unintended consequences, not just bankruptcies, people losing their jobs, but depression, mm-hmm. suicide, uh, alcoholism, spousal abuse. Those are the kinds of things that are going on uh, that are not being counted by our healthcare professionals. Well, you know, that, that, that all the talk that goes on, I have not heard one mention about the restaurants or other associated businesses and what they're going to. It's all about the people and protecting people and they, why they never address it. At least they've addressed it. And I felt they're addressing it. You feel like at least they're noticing, but they're not, mm-hmm. not at all. Mm-hmm. And we haven't even talked about the hypocrisy. You've got people like Sheila Kuehl, who's uh, Orange County supervisor, uh, and she votes to ban outdoor dining. And with hours of signing the the, uh, the ban on outdoor dining, she's engaging in, wait for it, outdoor dining. You've got the mayor of uh, San Francisco going to the same restaurant that uh, the governor went to. And by the way, when the governor went to that restaurant, Ron, he had uh, California medical officials with him. All of them were breaking the protocol. And then afterwards, the medical officials who were with them said they didn't break the protocol, what, that the governor just apologized for breaking the protocol. So, <laughs> and so you got the hypocrisy. But more importantly, Ron, it shows you that these officials aren't nearly as afraid of the virus as they're telling us to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't engage in breaking their own protocols. No. Well, I, I could add a name I won't name, but very high in L.A. City. The t- dined at the cannery here in, my, in a large group that he shouldn't have been. So, mm-hmm. but, so you may know. We find out the ones we find out. Who knows how many others have done stuff that uh, haven't been found out. Well, Ron, thank you very much. Uh, El Cholo, dating back to what, 1993, 87 years young. Uh, 1923, my grandparents first started it. 1923, 87 yeah. years young, still bad in cleanup. Ron, love you. Thanks for coming on. I love you too, guy. Take care. Bye.